this never gets old. It never gets old. Our favorite part of every morning. <laughs> Good morning. Last night we came out for a little late night snuggle to check on them before bed and they were snuggled together, nestled up in the back of the barn. It was the cutest thing ever. Backs to each other. Where are you going? Good morning, London. Oh, hi, Hudson. Good morning. It's time for morning grains. We're gonna get halters and then grain, okay? And then we'll go play. And then we get to muck the barn out. <laughs> Where are you laying in your cozy chips? You guys like all those fluffy chips in there, huh? Yeah, Dad's gonna get your halter on. Lennon's waiting for grains. Yes, you're gonna have a halter and then you get grains. Good girl. You are the best. Good girl. Oh, look how pretty you are. Yeah, Hudson's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I gotta do this and then I get breakfast. <laughs> you had to think about how hungry you were, Hudson? <laughs> Lennon snips, licking your coat, Billy. Morning, Daddy. Let's get some grains, because that's get some great. greens. Some greens, good job. Okay, Mom's gonna get the greens. The horses eat before we do in the morning. <laughs> Your own bowl, Hudson. Good job. I try to stay in the back far enough. To... <laughs> Before you know it, you'll be eating grains for breakfast, Billy. <laughs> if you're hungry enough. <laughs> This way? Let's go look at your pretty brook for a minute. Yeah, that's a good boy. Look at the view you have. Look at that view. Say hi to our YouTube family. Say hi. Yeah, you just like to stand with your mom, huh? Come on, London. Here she comes. Time to play, London. Good job. Yeah, you want to go see London now? Come on, let's go see London. Good morning, girl. We're going to play. Daddy's just shutting the gate. Oh, good job, you guys. Oh, London wants some scratches. Say good morning. Oh, it's a sunny day. We're going to fill the hay, and Mom's going to go do your waters, okay? Doing our morning routine with the horses, honestly, like Phil said, never gets old. They're so cute in the morning. And one of our YouTube family members was like, it must be like Christmas morning, every morning when you open the barn, and it really is. I think we fall in love with them more every single day. I know, every time I see them, or I'm like, I make a reason to have to go through them. I'm like, I'm gonna go get wood. Like we are stocked with wood, but. Every time we can't find each other, we're like, oh, I know where he is, or oh, I know where she is. But yeah, it's been so nice having them. And I knew we were gonna love them but how much we love them after them being here just for a week, it's kind of like unimaginable. Like I said, I knew I was gonna love them, but I didn't know I was gonna like, <laughs> whoa, I'm pretty obsessed. They're pretty awesome. And their personalities are really starting to show now, which is a lot of fun to see them kind of like come into their own. And yeah. last night, like they were snuggling in the barn and they're just so full of love. And like you saw yesterday's video, them like frolicking in the corral. They've just been having fun together and they seem really at home here, which is really nice. I'm filling the net right now. Our YouTube family suggested that we didn't keep the nets inside the mini barn. So we're not keeping them in the mini barn anymore. I think that's a great idea. As soon as I read the comment, I was thinking about it all night and I had to go remove them from the mini barn because the only thing in my head was like, what if they get trapped in the net and all the worst things in my mind. So I went, took them out and we're only using them in the corral for extra supplement. We actually have hay on different spots in the corral right now so they can kind of graze around the corral and keep active. And But these are also so fun to watch and we do love them, but they, 
the horses just, really like them, right? Like they yeah. like picking out of them like it's fun for them, I think, even though they're kind of more for like if you want to slow feed. But that's why Phillip's been giving them different options on where they can get the hay. And then we just kind of like some of our YouTube family suggested we kind of second guess putting them in the barn, even though we had seen them in like every horse video and yeah. every horse recommendation is to get hay nets. But I think you guys are right. And we kind of just didn't want to have any risk <laughs> behind having them. So now they're just out where we're supervising the horses. I'm the hay man. You're the hay man. Hey man. Hey man. Hey, what a beautiful day. So once the horses are in their barn that we're building in the spring, the mini barn that they're in will finish getting its revamp and it will be all the storage for hay. But right now we're just making a gigantic mess with it in the barn or in the garage. <laughs> Today we're going to tackle getting this very strange little alcove turned into a vacuum garage. I think it'll be perfect for me to have a spot to put all of our cleaning products, our vacuum, broom, mop, bucket, things that you just really aesthetically don't want to see in your space because we have the luxury of having just this like random little spot right here. I feel like we kind of get like lost in that space because both doorways are right here when you come in. So I think it's going to be the perfect little spot. So our YouTube family had such a great idea. They said, even though it's going to be a small space, use the space. So today we're going to kind of rip some of this off. We have to be able to get the wall super smooth here. And then Philip's going to do this really little technique with the table saw to get us an angle here for the spot so we can add shelving, spot for our charging vacuum, things like that. I heard there was demo involved. <laughs> I knew just the guy. <laughs> Did you? I did. Because you only want this rack, right? <laughs> I only want this rack. Okay, well then we're... I don't know if you got the right guy, <laughs> but I'll do my best. And that's, maybe that's what you were saying. We're putting the pantry together, but this one small spot needs to get taken apart. So this nice chair wheel is around and it was original as far as we know to the house as long as we've ever seen photos. And so we are going to keep it around the perimeter of the room. It's on the right side and then we kind of tried to emulate a little bit doing vertical shiplap for our backsplash on the pantry side. But we need to remove this side just a little bit so that we can put the little vacuum garage there and then we can put the pieces back that you're still going to see in front of the doors and stuff. So ideally if we get this off, Oh. in one piece nope. <laughs> I didn't literally mean in one piece but just in some pieces that we can use to then install a few back where they need to go once we get the doors and everything built for the shelving they really put so many nails on these I was taking some off on the far side of the room and they really didn't ever want these to come off it helps if you talk to it like, come on, you can do it. A little bit of inspiration. Don't break. Don't break. Oh, Yay, good you. job. So you can see that we're like a lath and plaster wall behind. And so that was another reason why we really didn't want to have to demo too much because these walls are in decent shape to not have to re-drywall the whole space. So I am going to take the bottom one off. And yeah. then I think what we're going to do is we'll go from here back and then see kind of where we are. Right. I, I do want some of this, right? Yeah, we want to be able to put that top rail back on and of course the bottom trim back on, only the parts like up to where the cabinet will be. Just like we did on the laundry end around by the cabinets, right? And the counter. Oh, I love a good demo. You do love a good demo. You didn't know it was going to be such a good day and you are going to get to demo. <laughs> you got to cut outside with the table saw overlooking your horses and then do a little bit of demo. I think that's a good day. I have no complaints about that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm focused. Focused. That's kind of perfect that the trim is off actually because I need to peel off a whole bunch of silicone that they put around the trim and repaint them before I reinstall them like on the other side of the room anyways. I remember this being really scary when we did that side of the room because we uncovered a whole bunch of holes in the wall. So if you remember, we uncovered a whole bunch of spots that where there was just like random plumbing that was not connected to anything. Behind the wall on the right side, you saw our weasel came up from that hole. <laughs> our pet weasel we had for a short time and then on this side underneath that floor we found an exposed septic pipe that was never hooked up to or was no longer hooked up to a toilet that was just not even capped 
we found some scary things in this room behind the walls and hopefully nothing behind this one because it just leads to the hallway. So really there shouldn't be really anything, right Philly? <laughs> yeah. I mean really there shouldn't be anything but you know what would have been- Captain Myers put behind the walls. Do you know what would have been really smart? If I didn't build the built-in against the column and I could have moved that all out for yeah, you. Really, and I know it's just gonna be like a vacuum garage, but I'm trying so hard not to wreck the nice. Aww. Sorry. I shouldn't have installed it, but I didn't know at that point for sure that we were gonna do the little vacuum garage. We've been keeping any little spare pieces, for example, these few that Phil's pulling off right now. If we don't think we're gonna need them, we are still keeping them in case we end up needing them somewhere else in the house. So if we're pulling something off and then maybe one snaps in half or something, we kind of have all the original pieces that we've taken off in case. And then I guess once we get everything done, we'll just figure out what to do with our in case pile. But for now, the comforts of having that are good. You could probably leave that back corner one on. So maybe just a few more on that spot and then we'll just have to reinstall up to, that's the one that's a pain. They're very, they're very, kind of like tongue and groove together. Oh, good job. You haven't even, uh, and then maybe they've all come off great. Hit that one over with a hammer. Are they, the hammers are in the garage. <laughs> we'll be back. Phillips just found some writing on the back of some of this slats that are on it. What does it say? Okay. Cole it Harbor. Says, I don't know what that says, but that definitely says Cole Harbor. Something, I think that's a D-U, does that say Hudson? Oh my gosh. It says D-U-S-O-N, Cole Harbor. Where's the, oh no, it's cut off. Would it be that piece then that you're gonna take off? No, cause that's the top. Okay, if that says Hudson, Cole Harbor, then that's, it definitely looks like it. It definitely says Cole Harbor. Yeah, it says Cole Harbor. And then that, the little pencil mark goes like a D-U-S-O-N. Number one. Number one. Oh, that's so neat. Strange markings. Okay, now I wanna know what's behind those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop! Demo day. Now I'm dying to know what's on the back of this one, so. I'm not tearing down this... all the walls just for you to solve an unsolved mystery of what's <laughs> written behind the walls. <laughs> like, is there a map? Is there treasure? Hidden messages behind the walls of a late 1899 home, come on. Yeah, and if it says Hudson, I'm gonna freak out. <laughs> Do you, I don't know if you could find it because unless one of them had, was cut and then it was placed beside it. Well, that's what I'm hoping for my own curiosity's sake. Let's <laughs> so, hope that they put this on and the order in which they wrote on it. <laughs> Tell me there's writing. Tell me there's writing. No writing. There's that a treasure one. map. <laughs> Could you imagine? That would be amazing. <laughs> and the boys would freak out. Come on, what does that say? YouTube family. Okay. This is a close up. Tell me in the comment section what letters you think this says. Okay, I'm gonna try to, okay. So from what I can see, it looks like D U S O N. No, so then that would be a... Yeah, that wouldn't be Hudson, that would be... Oh, that would be opposite, sorry. That would be U-D-S-O-N. Okay, so it's D, looks like D-U-S-O-N, and then C-O-L-E Harbor, which is the area that we are, Cole Harbor. So, but I don't know what that word is. And then it just says number one stamped upside down here. Pretty cool though. Hidden messages in the wall. Hit messages <laughs> in our walls. Who knows what we'll find? We have found some pretty cool stuff in the walls over here. So. We have. Phillips cut the angle for this eight foot board to see if we can get it to go parallel with the front, but oh, perfect. So, I mean, the wall isn't we'll need entirely. A level. Yeah. But I think that looks good there. That's perfect. And then we might need to actually remove some stuff there just to get it level. But I want to see if we put something here. We need something flush there. Yeah, there's 
going to be something here, and then this is going to be... Oh, wow. Right? Flush. Flush. Okay, so all I did was used a little piece of cardboard to be able to build the angle of the wall, and then Philip emulated that on the table saw with the angle of the blade to be able to create the angle piece that we needed. So if you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but this back side, well, this will go flush against the wall, but be flat on the front. So this wall is an angle. And then the back side, you can see Philip has cut. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but there's a deep angle there that's the same as the wall so that it can actually go flat and be the same shape at the front as the side of the built-in for the fridge. Oh, that's so, that's so rewarding. <laughs> Good job, first try. Mm. High five, that was great. Well, you have no hands, but imaginary high five. <laughs> Perfect. And now the challenge is building the shelves because the shelves inside are ultimately what's going to attach to this piece because we don't want to take any of the space out from inside the cabinet. If we would do a lot of like thick wood like we did on the sides of here along the wall, we're gonna lose about three inches and this is a very narrow spot so we don't want to do that. So we're going to kind of leave it hollow, put the shelves in and then we'll make it look pretty after. Pay attention to the sound. The one that's coming from you. <laughs> There's a whole lot of crossed fingers with this project. Yeah, maybe I'll do one here, one in the middle, and one there. Okay. Because I was thinking on the door, I could put little things that the bottles and stuff can go in. I can't, I'm sure it can't, the shelves can't be too high. <laughs> I mean, like, shelving is great, but you can't reach them, what's the point? <laughs> Moment of truth. Did my triangle make the cut? Literally. <laughs> so far. So far. Yay! Perfect. This is not level yet, so that needs to go over more. Yeah. Perfect. Let's make a duplicate. <laughs> That's in there, tight. That's on there. Sweet. Do you plan on sitting up there? Seems like um, I can't find a leash. Oh, she's probably sitting up in the pantry built-in again. <laughs> she's in the vacuum garage. I'm in the vacuum garage again. <laughs> That's where she gets her greatest thoughts. That's gonna be my new think spot. Sitting up in the pantry or the vacuum garage cabinet. <laughs> I have those top two shelves on and then this eight foot piece here is just resting against. It's not attached to anything. But I just thought for right now, what I would do would be, I would make one more of those strange triangular shapes for the bottom and then be able to put the face frames from the bottom all the way across the front of those ones. It'll look chunky, kind of like how we have the thickness over here or in the thickness of the shelves there. So it's all the same, but I don't have any of that wood. So Philip's gonna make me some. I went ahead and put the dot filling all the way around the seams of the doors that I prepped the other day so that that could be drying while I'm waiting to be able to paint it while we're working on the actual vacuum garage, just speeding up the process a little bit. I also did it on these cabinets here that are primed, and then I did it on the lower ones here with the sink. That way, when I go over with the paint, that part is already dry and we can get to putting on actual paint. Because as some of you commented, oh, Alicia, your cabinets need another coat of paint. They're just primed. They are not painted yet or sanded completely. We're going to use the other side of the board that Philip used for the angles so that we don't waste anything to be able to make those face frames for the front of each of the shelf spots. We just decided to come out and give a little snack to the horses. They know, they're like grains are in that bowl. Look how pretty she looks with her hair blowing back in the breeze. <laughs> are you a model, London? She's like, I know there's grains. <laughs> Mommy's here. Mommy's just here. There you go. Good boy. Hi. Ooh, a late night afternoon snack. Or late afternoon snack. It's January. It is January 11th today. And we have had literally the snow sprinkles that you can see in the round pen right here. That is all we've had. 
And I mean, I'm not like jinxing us or anything, but it's been pretty nice weather. We've I'm had some spring-like weather or early fall-like weather the last, I'd say, two weeks. Yeah. The brook is just flowing like normal. The sun is shining. Wow. My dream of doing built-ins for the laundry pantry room is coming to life because I now have built-ins all the way across this whole side of the pantry, which I'm so happy about. I think the built-in around the fridge looks incredible now and it doesn't have the doors on yet. I think it's going to be so much more of a used space that we'll be able to tuck so many things behind. This is now my vacuum garage. So I have storage at the top on the left and then storage above the fridge. I'm still debating on whether or not I wanna put a shelf in there or if I wanna leave it large for things like stored paper towel packages and things like that. We don't really buy a lot of that because it's disposable, but I think that will probably be a spot where we can just put big things that don't make sense anywhere else in the pantry room. And then we'll be able to do our electrical charging vacuum in the bottom, brooms, mops, everything. So I need to finish up some seaming in there. But what I did was I put in a nice solid piece of board on the wall on the inside and did the face frames all the way on all of the shelves. So my envision is to do one door that covers the top two holes right there, one door that is along the bottom here, similar to the pantry that we did in the actual kitchen space, and then a double door above the fridge. And then of course, finish up our doors on this side. But let me know what you think of my vacuum garage. We got a lot accomplished today. I now have some putty drawing on some of the spots where we use the brad nailer and any seams that we wanted to have filled in so that they would look really seamless in the end. And I'm ready to start putting on the primer. So I can pull this fridge out now and then unplug everything, do my primer and get to finishing this full left side. Thank you so much for cheering me on. It is really exciting to make more progress every day in the pantry and tomorrow is another day of working in the pantry space. So stay tuned. If you're new to our channel, hit subscribe. I will see you tomorrow.